The last stop in Orlando, Florida, saw the jaw-dropping return of the 259. Kawasaki's James Stewart Jr. Bubba was spectacular, whether it was in his heat race victory or leading the main event before crashing. With his first 250 podium under his belt, Stewart comes to Texas looking for his first career 250 win. Defending series champion Chad Reed is building a late surge to a title run. The Yamaha superstar has won two in a row and left his chief rival's home state with the momentum in the race for the 2005 series crown. Series points leader Ricky Carmichael dominated the first half of the 2005 campaign. The three-time 250 champion won seven of the first nine main events. But lately, the Suzuki star has looked absolutely mortal, crashing and giving up ground on his series points lead. The three most talented Supercross racers in the world come to Texas looking for their star to shine. The 250 Supercross from Texas Stadium is next. Texas Stadium home to the Dallas Cowboys, but tonight it's Supercross. The THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series from Irving, Texas. Let's take a look at the series points in both standings have Ricky Carmichael on top. He leaves Mike LaRocco in the THQ World Supercross GP, and he bests Chad Reed on the THQ AMA Supercross Series. But first, he has to face this track. Let's take a look at the MX versus ATV Unleashed track map. If we're in Texas Stadium, we're talking hard packed clay, a slippery track tonight in Dallas. A long start trade into the left first turn. A rhythm section, two of you guys are going tabletop to tabletop, where others are going double double. A tricky section, a lot of passing there tonight. A right hander into a double triple. They're gonna click third gear, hit the first big triple jump into a little rhythm section. You're gonna go right, a double double triple. Some guys are going double double single and going to the inside. A step up into about 30 yards with the sand. You're gonna get a face full of dirt if you get a bad start. Your second triple, a right hander, a long section of whoops. These guys are gonna be going fourth gear pin. A staircase on off, very tricky section right there. A left-hander back up the start straight, a very tight, slippery right-hander, and then the finish line, and that's your MX versus ATV Unleashed track map. A very technical, hard-packed, yet sandy track. How often do you say that at the Dallas Supercross? Let's take a look at our MX versus ATV Unleashed track facts, and let's show you why. 6,000 cubic yards of dirt, 90% of it's clay. There's the hard pack. They watered it up. It's slippery on top, but I want you to see 2,000 feet long, 7,000 sheets of plywood underneath, but that bottom section, that sand section, you have the hard pack, the sand. You don't know whether you're coming or going, Devo, and that's what really changes it up here in Dallas. Let's take a look at our format. What does it take to make the main event here at the 250. Well, there's going to be two heats. Eight will transfer top four in each one. Two semis. Five will transfer in each one of those. Each one of those. And then one last chance qualifier. That dreaded, that dreaded race to only two guys. All right, let's take a look at our 250 starting grid. I, what are you going to say about Chad Reed? He's won here two times, looking for his third victory. But he also has Kevin Windham in this heat race, Debo. Windham's won here twice as well. This is about as close to his local track as you would ever say. Anything in Texas, this is where he grew up racing. It's close to home for Kevin Windham, and it's also a hard pack, slippery track. He's riding that big 450, which he is so smooth and fluid. He's kind of falling off the map against the other guys. This is a chance for him to prove it, and Chad Reed going for three in a row. There's the Thor factory Yamaha. Chad Reed won 250C. Heat race number one. Taking the start, it looks like Chad Reed, number 22, is out in front. Kyle Lewis looked like he had a good start, but now we see Reed with a whole shot. How long is he going to take Wyndham to go up there and challenge him? Not very long. He's in second. Well, that was awful nice right there. That <laughs> A 125 guy would have put him in the tough blocks, but Wyndham just kind of decides to pull back and drop in behind Reed, kind of check out some of his lines and see, hey, am I able to take off and pass this guy? Because I haven't been able to do it in the last few weeks. Chad Reed, number 22, originally from Australia, now living in Florida. Kevin Wyndham, the Louisiana boy, but this is home to him. The crowd went crazy when they introduced him at the start of the show. And Kevin Wyndham showing you that four-stroke Honda. Watch out, this left-hand turn. And 
They're playing follow the leader. Where we saw earlier in the 125 class, Diddy, they were really aggressive. These uh, experienced veterans are saying, hey, take some time, stretch it out. Well, they really graded the track out before this night, trying to loosen it up, this clay. And it's developing into a one-line guy. These guys are taking the outside. Look at Reed just going way up, drop point at the front end. That's that tough rhythm section. These guys going on, off the tabletop instead of jumping over it. Kent the wind up, pulls up right behind Chattery. Chattery almost loops out. He's bunny hopping and got the front end way too high. And boy, that Wyndham has to be going, okay, I can see I'm starting to fluster him just a little bit. Reed, he's out in front. He doesn't know what's going on behind, but Wyndham has to be saying, I'm, I'm as, just as fast as you. Maybe I can play a little head game and get, get just start having a bobble here or there. Yeah, it's definitely right now because Chad is not racing his race. He seems to be making some mistakes, some mistakes we have not seen from him these past few weeks. Kevin on the other hand is saying, man, I'm sticking with Ch Chad, which I've been, able, been un unable to do these last couple weeks. And now look at him, just drafted right behind him. Is he gonna make another mistake and open up the door for Kevin Windham? We'll just have to see. Chad Reed, Kevin Windham, one and two. Riders going down to the whoops section. You'll see that when they pass in just a second, Debo. But Wyndham is also having problems, it looks like, in the turns of that big bike. It's going to be close. 250cc heat, Reese. If anything happens, we'll show you in a replay. When we come back, it's Reed and Wyndham right now on top. Largest off-road specialist. Get ready. Welcome back, Travis Pastrana to 250 Supercross, and he went down hard in the whoops just a moment ago. His debut ride, or, or back to the series, and it looks like he's gonna have to limp off the track, and not a good start, and he's having to shake out some cobwebs. Davey Coombs, you got something for us? Well, unfortunately, Travis was going through the whoops. He tangled up with KTM's Jay Marmon, went down, it's his right knee. He was, Rick Johnson from Team Suzuki was right there, Doc Bonder was right there. Travis was yelling, he was so disgusted, but man, it didn't last long, guys. The Red Bull Cernix American Suzuki rider, Travis Pastrana, everybody wants to see him do well. And it seems like every time we see him, he's having to be either, you know, limping off the track. I mean, can he stay healthy, Denny? That's just too bad, man. We're all excited to have him back right now. He makes a big mistake and down and out again. And it sounds like it was someone else's mistake. He just was the beneficiary of it. But Chad Reed, he's opened up that door, and Kevin Winham kind of settled into a pace. I think he got rid of some of those nerves because he was making some mistakes early, now looking pretty solid. Chad Reed starting to whip it around a little bit. You're right. Now he's starting to get a little more comfortable, but it didn't look like Chad was that comfortable when Wyndham was in his back pocket there. But Wyndham looks like he's having to fight the bike, that big 450 in the in the in the turns. Well, right now Reed has put down a 52.4. That's his fast lap time so far. And that is a good 0.3 of a second faster than Wyndham. Wyndham's got a 52.7. Reed's trying to make a statement. You know who's on the start line right now, Robbie Floyd? Who's Carmichael that? and Stewart. <laughs> this is his chance, Reed's chance to make a statement, try and smooth things out, say, hey, I can make this three in a row here in Dallas. I can make it three in a row this year in 2005. The Amso Honda of Kevin Wyndham in second. The, our, our two heat race winners, we find out who has the fastest race time, the, the combined race. Whoever has the fastest race, they will get first pick on that starting gate. Is it that important here in Dallas? The gate's uh, pretty spread out. I don't see any pinch off spots, but it's pretty long here as well. I think it's more about just saying I'm the fastest guy when you go into the heat race or in the main event knowing that you just laid down the fastest nine laps of the night compared to these guys are eight laps. And right now, Reed's looking pretty solid. You notice how in Dallas, this is as tacky as it will get all night, right? Diddy, you've raced here many, many times. This is about as good as you'll see it because it's going to get ugly at the end of the night. Good point, Robbie. As this track, it starts getting more and more packed. You can see the, the, the shiny spots starting to come up now, and then that moisture will start coming back out of the ground in that, puck, that hard pack spots, and it'll start getting real greasy. It'll also look like the Devil's Bowl just down the road in Mesquite. It's going to look like a flat track. There's going to be rubber laid down from this course. It is, take a picture of it now in your mind because it will not look like this at the end of the night. It will be uh, black spots from rubber being laid out, also white. I mean, it will be hard packed other than the sand section, which he's entering right now. Well, Look normally, at normally in a track like Orlando, once the tracks start getting kind of messed up in the main line, they start kind of changing the lines. Here, they want it to almost stay in that line, because like I said, the blue groove starts getting up, they start laying down some rubber, and a little bit more traction, say perhaps, than just outside the main groove. Well, look at that. Chad Reed working into lap traffic, just railing by the lap riders right now, and that's gonna hurt him as far as his time concern. This is an eight lap race, the top four make it to the main event. We're on that last lap, we're on eight of eight. Well, you saw him right there. I think he's making an aggressive move on these lap, because he wants to lay down the fast lap. He doesn't right. want to mess around the lap and get slowed up. And you can see him right now, just oh. getting messed up right now by Michael Young there as he puts him a lap down. 
We're taking the top. Look, he's looking over, kind of shakes his head. I'm like, man, what's going on? I'm trying to lay down some fast lap times here. But he still took the hand off and saluted the crowd out there. They like him. I mean, he's won here the past two years. He'll be the only, he'll be the first person to ever win three 250 main events in a row if he can do so tonight. We take four. Right now, it's Reed, Wyndham, Short, and Fonseca. Sebastian Tortelli on the bubble trying to get in that fourth and final transfer. Now, watch the chats in his whoops right here. The perfect up close. These whoops are getting just hammered on right now. They're starting to get a little lift, cupped out, and Chad Reed just looked like that's the perfect way to get to the whoop section tonight. 53-8. Darren Sorensen, his mechanic, happy with that. One more turn to go. Heat race number one is done, and Chad Reed is going to take the win on the 22 Yamaha. I guess it's safe to say that Chad Reed doesn't think this uh, championship is over with, huh, Debo? Definitely not. He's 29 points down. He needs a little bit of luck, but he's been phenomenal in Florida. He's going to try and do the same thing here in Dallas, and we just saw him. He's not happy with the lappers. He's trying to lay down the fastest lap times in this heat race, prove that he's the fastest guy to beat. Heat race number two coming up. James Stewart's in it, and he had a problem earlier in qualifying. Yeah, in a preliminary qualifier this morning, he's got to ride that. He's 21st in the points. He's just outside the bubble. He has to ride this and he flies off the side of the track. He does the bubble scrubble over the triple jump and literally flies up the track. He has within a second notice to go, am I going left or ride this tough lock? It shows what an incredible rider he is. Turns around, gets right back on the track, and he's ready to race. He's here in heat race number two. Well, Denny, let's take a look at our Samsung Wireless Heat 1 results. Chad Reed, the dominant rider in this one, Wyndham, Short, and Fonseca. We'll move on to the finals. Everyone else below fourth will have to ride the semifinal. Let's go down to Davey Coombs with Chad Reed. Well, Chad, that was a very, very impressive heat race ride. You had Kevin Windham for a while, and then the end. I think you were racing against Ricky and Bubba on the starting gate. I don't know if I was racing against them on the stopwatch, but, uh, you know, I guess the boat's the same. So uh, I feel real good out here. I feel uh, tracks really coming around. And uh, for Dallas, it's actually we have a lot of traction out there. And I had a bit of a close call out there, so uh, good to get that out of the way. And bike's running awesome. I want to give a shout-out to the guys at Yamaha. They really got this thing running great. And, Bridgestone, all the guys at Scott, and uh, my good friends at uh, Parson Lynn and Thor. Good job. I, I know you worry about the time. I think she's got a TSO watch for you. <laughs> good job, Chad. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Davey. There's Ricky Carmichael getting ready for his 250 heat race. He's the series points leader, but there's another man in the picture, James Bubba Stewart, also in his heat race. They met in Orlando, and we talked to him earlier and said, what did you learn about that Orlando race? I didn't, you know, I didn't know how fast I needed to go when I came back. You know, I wasn't out of control, but, you know, I was just definitely going pretty fast. And, you know, I figured out, you know, I just kind of expected those guys to be a little bit more faster, you know, a little bit faster when they, just from racing all year and me coming back, I thought I was going to be off the pace a little bit. But I think the biggest thing I learned, I need to slow down a little bit. Uh, then, you know, I won't have to go as fast and, you know, I, I won't have to take the chances. It was cool, though. <laughs> I just, you know, learned that my speed was good and uh, and, and it's going to be some good racing and I just need to have a little more patience and, you know, give myself a shot at the at the race at the 15 lap mark instead of instead of laying on the ground. You know, that's uh, really the only thing that I, that I would have changed from the race. I was sitting perfect and, uh, you know, that that's the way things go and uh, looking to improve on that. What do you think about that, Denny Stevenson? Both of those riders really want to win bad, and this championship Bubba could be a key factor. Let's take a look at our starting grid for heat race number two of the 250cc class. Carmichael and Boss, two, a former champion and a current champion in Supergrass. Carmichael, the number four. Watch Michael Arocco, David Billiman, factory riders in this heat race. Only four move on to that 250 main event. This is going to be a huge heat race as well. 259, number four right there. We see him on the screen. This guy is amazing right now. He is trying to set the gauntlet on Bubba Stewart. He doesn't want to end the season like he did when he won the championship last time. He wants to win with some, end the season with some wins, and Heath Boss. There's Heath Boss, originally from Minnesota. He now lives in Texas, out of Miko, Texas, on that Yamaha No Fear machine. He's wearing our onboard camera. Let's see how the reigning GP champion does it. Oh, James Stewart with the biggest hole shot. Two bike links, and he wasn't even halfway down the front straight. Man, it looked like he was shot out of a cannon right there. The perfect example, Bubba goes on off the tabletops while Carmichael jumps over the two. Stewart gets the wheel to the ground and just takes off to an instant, almost, what, two-second lead? He is serving notice, ladies and gentlemen, right now. James Stewart leads Ricky Carmichael. I know Ricky in his head. When he saw that, had to be going, how in the heck did 
did that just happen? Man, I can't believe right now James Stewart just taking off doing exactly what Ricky Carmichael does in the competition each week. And now Bubba's laying it down to Ricky Carmichael in this heat race number two. Well, I mean, he had a tremendous advantage on the start. Now let's see if Ricky can start picking him off. Give him a lap or two to settle down. David Villeman back in, th in third. There's the 259, the Fox Racing Oakley Kawasaki, James Stewart. And there's the Suzuki, number four, the champ, Ricky Carmichael. Going for another one there this year, Debo, and he's also trying to win this heat race. He wants that first pick on the gate, but first he's got to get by James. And Ricky continues to jump over the tabletops while all the other guys are jumping on, jumping off. That is at least a second lap faster, and Carmichael was a second slower than Stewart in practice. I'm really surprised at Carmichael's choice of lines. Final transfer, Mike LaRocco in fourth, Heath Voss in fifth. There's Voss. We're taking a look at his onboard camera. Now the factory Yamaha boss. He's been a privateer all these years. He wins the THQ World Supercross GP Championship, and Yamaha keep him a ride for 05. Yeah, it's a huge advantage. You always talk about the privateers and uh, having a race against factory equipment. We're seeing that Heath Boss has jumped on that factory equ equipment and has had a very consistent, strong season until that injury in the middle of the season. But right now, he's back and looking really strong. He looked good in his preliminary qualifiers. He looked good in practice. Mike Preston just or no, not Preston. Cal, he's Kawasaki Road Race team manager. Yeah, I gotta, Travis Preston. <laughs> Travis Preston, who, who has done well here in the 125 class. Preston won back in 2002, but it's the 250s now. But he's a big boy. He can handle the big bike, but they still have to get that top four. And he's actually on the 450 Honda, the factory bike. Travis Preston, like I said, a big, lanky, strong kid. I think he suits that 450 well as he now sets his sights on Boss and LaRocco. Boss looks good. I'm impressed with the way he's riding. The number 13 Yamaha now out of Miko, Texas, and he's on the inside. LaRocco, a little bit of a bobble there. And look at Heath Voss. He's been out with injury for a number of weeks. This is his first race back. It's his new hometown race, because he's moved to Texas, and he's looking strong, but he's hunting on the rock right now, and uh, it's not often you're hunting the rock. Mike LaRocco won here back in 1994, trying to do it in 2005. But right now, James Stewart is leading Ricky Carmichael by four seconds. When we come back, we'll see how this thing turns out. Stewart, Carmichael, Philemon, and LaRocco, your top four in Dallas. Ricky Carmichael has gone down. He was in second about five seconds behind James Stewart. Didn't look like he was pressing things and goes down. Welcome back to Irving, Texas for the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series. Boy, a disappointment for Carmichael. Now he's going to have to try and battle for a transfer. Yeah, unbelievable circumstance right now. Ricky was a large second, like you said. He's going through the staircase, staircase section right after the whoops. Number 90, Brian Mason is down. The flagger obviously didn't get out in time, or Ricky didn't see the flagger. And Ricky jumps on his motorcycle and flies off the track. He's now way back in six spot, like I said, out of transfer. James Stewart, David Billiman, Michael Rocco, Heath Boss, who we saw just before the break, going for that final transfer spot. He is in there as it stands now. Preston is followed by Carmichael. But man, Ricky, as the time you know runs down, this is an eight-lap race. He doesn't have enough time. I mean, Stewart's gone. He's 12 seconds. Carmichael needs to close in on Preston, and then he's still got to pick off Heath Boss if he's going to make it to the uh, main event by way of his heat race. He's racing right now with the purpose of getting that main event, and he, James Stewart, you see him kind of making a mistake, a bobble in the whoop section. That's what cost him to win in Orlando. Right now, though, I think he's learned a lot from, from Orlando, and right now he's looking really smooth and fluid, and just other than that little bobble we just saw, he has taken off. Like I said, what now, an 11 and a half second point, uh, lead over David Billiman? 52.096 is Stewart's fastest lap time. I mean, these are crazy numbers we're seeing out of Stewart. Earlier in the practice session, uh, we were seeing Reed 53.4, Stewart 52.2. He's the only rider in the 52s right now. Yeah, he is already two full straightaways ahead of David Bullerman. The Clover, number 12 there on the blue Yamaha in second. Stewart right now is in a class of his own, at least in his heat race, especially with Carmichael coming out. Then with Rafa, number five in the red Honda. There's the final transfer. Boss right there, number 70, Travis Preston. And here comes Carmichael. Like you said, Robbie, he's got to make two passes on two very strong riders. The number 13 is the rider to look for because he's in the final. The number four is not. Bosch, number 13, Amico, Texas, is trying to hold on Preston, who's trying to hold on Carmichael, but none of these guys could probably even see James Stewart unless they look halfway across the track. You know, I think what did help Stewart a little bit today, he had to ride a preliminary qualifier. He's 21st in points. He had to ride that extra race today, and all it did, I think, was make him a little stronger, a little smoother. Oh, man, we see Ricky Carmichael down, down again. What? 
This is what Chad Reed has been waiting for. I mean, the, the mental mistakes, the physicals, whatever. He's making mistakes, and Reed has to be having a little, you know, catch me out. He's got the, the, the what's that, grinning like a Cheshire cat. That's what I'm trying to say. Man, it's tough. I, I am really surprised. Ricky Carmichael, he's the champion of all champions right now, one of the most dominant motocrossers of all time, supercrossers as well, making these mistakes. We just have not seen it from him in the past, and he hates to lose. Right now, he has got to be just steaming mad. And he's hung it up, too. He knows he's not going to be in that final here. Now, don't do anything crazy. Don't do anything dumb and knock yourself down checker flags about to come out for the 259 james stewart over 15 seconds ahead of david billiman james stewart takes a heat race win let's take a look at what happened to carmichael this last time he's, he's coming in this corner this is right before the whoop section this is the beginning of the straightaway where he crashed at the end of the straightaway last time he whips he goes down in his turn he goes up high you see that shiny spot he loses the front in the front you see him kind of looking ahead of the whoops the front end just tucked and down he goes man that is the second week in a row he's lost the front end dark spot is loose tacky that bright, shiny section will probably be black at the end of the night. That is the hard pack starting to turn into glass, and Ricky Carmichael not going to make the main event via the heat race, something that uh, hasn't happened so far this year. This is the first time he's uh, he's met, not had a transfer out of a, out of the heat race. Going to the semifinal, I guarantee he's going to be doing some, some work on that bike back in the pits. There are some disappointed Ricky Carmichael fans unofficially finishes in seventh spot. Let's take a look at the official results now. Yep, Carmichael in seventh is Stewart, Bellman, LaRocco, and Boss. And we'll move on to the final. Let's go down to Davey. Well, Bubba, first of all, where in the world did that hole shot come from? Man, you got out of there. Yeah, you know, we uh, we did a lot of work on the starts this weekend, and uh, I feel great on it. You know, I feel really comfortable. You know, it's just now trying to get used to the start. You know, I haven't started in a long time, but I felt good out there. You know, I kind of struggled with the woods, but, you know, I feel good, and I'm uh, ready to do 20 now. Looking ahead, you were just barely a second faster than Reed, according to the mechanics down here. What do you think going into the main event? Is this your night? Is this the night you break through? Well, you know, I definitely hope so. You know, I, I kept screwing up through the whoop, so, you know, if I'm only a second faster, that's pretty good because, you know, I, I wasn't robbing my best out there, but it's good time. It's time to get it going on. Let's get this Kawasaki up on the podium. Thanks, Davey. James Stewart, another heat race win. He's raced three times in the 250 class for heat races. He's won all three of them. Now it's time for our Suzuki strategy. Thanks, Robbie. This week we're going to check out one of the tough rhythm sections here in Texas Stadium. Everybody's talking to Bubba Scrub, staying low. Check out Ricky Carmichael. He's using the faces to lift him. He's going high. He's jumping over the top of the tabletops. He's wasting time in the air. He's not moving forward. While on the other hand, James Stewart, He's jumping up on the top of the tabletops. He's using the tops to drive forward. He's not wasting time in the air. He's moving forward. He's using a new form of the Bubba Scrub. He's making things happen. He's not wasting time in the air. And that is our Suzuki strategy. The fans were on their feet just a moment ago in the semifinal races. It looked like a Suzuki factory affair. Definitely Suzuki's were in the semifinals. Travis Pastrana goes down his heat race, has to ride the semifinal, battles it out with Tortelli. Both those guys go one, two to make the final. Ricky Carmichael, what is he doing in the semifinal? Practicing, that's what he's doing. Step on, step off, Grasshopper, as we take a look at the GameStopper 250 semi one results. It is Tortelli and Pastrana. And the Thor 250 semi results, it was Carmichael with a victory. We look at the Samsung Wireless 250 LCQ results. Timmy Berry was on top. Get ready for an all-out battle at the front. The three kings of Supercross are set to go at it again in the 250 main event. Coming up next from Dallas, Texas. Welcome back. As the riders are on their parade lap, we're going to take a step away for just a sec and revisit the World Supercross GP champion Heath Voss as we find out Supercross isn't his only passion. Motorcycles aren't Heath Voss's only passion. He's also a licensed pilot that takes to the skies every chance he can get. It gives him a feeling that he just can't get on the ground. nothing like the freedom of being able to do it on your own. It's like driving your own car and being able to stop whenever you want to and being able to take off whenever you want to. And it's a different world up here. You, I mean, you can, everything just looks different. I mean, you can go, we can go check out, go look at whatever we want to look at. But right here's my house. 
there's a shop in my supercross tracks, and uh, that's the main reason I live up here in the hill country, because of this lake. This lake's pretty awesome, because you can come up here any time during the week, and there's nobody out here, we can... It's usually pretty calm when we go barefoot and uh, soft skin. And the home state Supercross has given Heath the chance to travel side by side with his bike. And in Debo, it's amazing how things have changed from the old Econoline van days. Yeah, from the days when I raced, they'd come in box vans. I mean, so salaries have skyrocketed, and so has the modes of transportation. Amazing. Look at the semi just pulls up, they load the bike up. That's a true factory rider. What is it with Supercross guys and their planes like Bob Hanna, Damon Bradshaw, now Heath Boss? That's it. We're off to the Dallas Supercross. Heath Boss is ready to fly in the 250 main event, and you'll see it if you stick with us here at Texas Stadium. This is the 26th time the 250 main event gate will drop in Dallas, Texas. It's the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series. Welcome inside, ladies and gentlemen. This is set to be a tremendous event. James Stewart wins his heat race. Chad Reed does so as well. I'm Robbie Floyd with Denny Stevenson, Davey Coombs. A tremendous crowd on hand as well. The biggest I've seen in several years, 43,276. This place is packed, ready to see James Stewart possibly with his first ever 250 main event win. But first, let's go down to Davey Coombs with the Honda Pit Report. Well, thanks, Robbie. I have the unfortunate duty to add another sad chapter to the Travis Pastrana saga. Travis actually came back from that crash in the heat race. He rode the semi, he got second behind Sebastian Tortelli, but then when he was back in the pits, when he took off his gear, he had a giant gash across his leg from that heat race crash. He was dizzy. Obviously, he had a concussion. Travis Pastrana will not race tonight. He qualified, but he's going to the hospital. Unfortunate again for Travis Pastrana. His Supercross season is done. You see that sign there? The storm is here. We were waiting for it at Anaheim 1. It is upon us now here in Dallas. Let's take a look at the Suzuki starting grid. Our top two qualifiers, Stuart Reeder up there, but Ricky Carmichael with ninth gate pick. It means nothing, Robbie. He's number four. He's a champion. He's having a race in semi. He's so good. He'll rebound from that. He'll be a contender tonight in this main event. Not a problem at all. Kevin Whittem, another guy. Keep an eye on him. He's won twice here in Dallas. He likes the hard pack, slippery track. Tonight could be his night. As we take a look at the onboard camera, the reigning THQ World Supercross GP champion. That's what it's like looking through the goggles of Heath Boss. Just a moment ago, Kevin Wyndham had some problems. As Davey was talking, they couldn't get his bike fi to fire up. No, similar like Chad Reed. He had some bike problems there after the parade lap. He had to do a quick run up to the tunnel, start it, race back down. Kevin Wyndham, he's ready to do battle tonight here in Dallas. 20 lap, 250cc main event. The big boys are here. It's time for the perfect storm. Another whole shot by James Stewart. That bike is hooking up. James Stewart right there. You see Ricky and him battled side by side down the start straightaway, right going to the first turn. Chad Reed throws an elbow on Wyndham. Or I'm sorry, Ricky Carlisle moves him out of the way, and he's not worried about Ricky right now. He's setting his sights on that 259 of James Stewart, who grabbed another huge hole shot. Just like Orlando, the race we've been waiting for. Now it's Stewart with a hole shot. Reed in second, Carmichael in third, Kevin Wyndham. Back there in about fifth or sixth spot. Even worse than that, it's actually Fonseca, the first Honda in the picture, in fourth spot. Well, we've heard from a Chad Reed in Orlando. Like he said, man, I'm pretty content running second. I was going to let James Stewart win this race, maybe just make up the points and Ricky Carmichael. Will Chad Reed be satisfied chasing James Stewart right now? Oh, he would set his sights and try and make something happen. No, he wants history to be made here as Chad Reed takes another victory in Dallas, takes being the first person to ever win three consecutive 250cc main events in all in the 26 starts, this will be the 26th start, we've never had a three-peat in 250 main. No, he's definitely trying to make something happen here. He wants to, he wants to close his gap on James Stewart because he needs those extra three points. If he has any hope of catching Ricky Carmichael on the point chase. We'll try and keep you up uh, updated. Of course, the TSO running order will be at the top of your screen. Let's find out how fast they're going. Let's take a look at the Butterfinger Crisp Whole Shot Award. Look at the green bike on the inside. Look at the right of your screen. Ricky and Bubba just coming flying. And look at Reed. Put an elbow on Carmichael. But it's James Stewart getting that whole shot. 
Kawasaki 259 takes home the Butterfinger Crest Hole Shot Award by about three bike lengths over Chad Reed. Reed throws in the Thunder Elbow, but both of those top two riders are able to step on, step off on that very first turn. And Ricky lost, he's about, about the time he's down right now, about 3.6 seconds, he almost lost it right there in that first lap. Denny Harwig had, with, with Clear Channel Motorsports, put together a little fact sheet. If they finish, if Carmichael finishes in third, and if Chad Reed were to win uh, every single race, it still would be Carmichael's championship. Ricky's down, or Ricky's ahead by 29 points. He can make up five points a race, Chad Reed can, if he wins and Ricky gets third. In five races, that's only 25 points. He has to catch and pass James Stewart. Yeah. If he wants to have a, 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 a chance at this, and Reed makes a huge mistake, and here comes Carmichael up the inside of him off camera right now. There it is. There's that battle. Now Reed needs to get by the number four Suzuki as we were looking at how fast James Stewart is. Reed makes the bottle this time. Now Reed, it's Carmichael with the incentive. Yeah, unbelievable. Reed was actually try, must have been trying to push it. He wanted to close the gap on Stewart. He knew he needed to make up the points. Oh, man. But they're going back and forth. Bubba's just going to keep pulling away. Yeah, that kind of surprised me. Ricky, I guess, is basically knew Reed was coming up on the inside of him. He knew that Reed hit him, slammed him in that first turn. He doesn't want to give Reed the opportunity to maybe knock him down and open up some more points and, or lose more points to this Chad Reed. Both riders are stepping on, stepping off in your Suzuki strategy. We saw Carmichael was hitting the face of those jumps. Now he's got the same line that Reed and Stewart has. Yeah, he's picked it up. He knew he had to do that. He did it in the semifinal. He's now done it. But look at this move right now. Chad Reed coming in, drops the front, gets a little sideways, hits the tough block, doesn't quite go down, but he's unable to do the step up section and opens up the door. You see Ricky Carmichael come storming by right now. But Chad gets him back. He's still in second, and Ricky's back there in third now, trying to make something happen. Back to live racing. There's the race for second spot. The 259 of James Stewart is in front by about six and a half seconds. Chad Reed in second, Ricky Carmichael in third. This championship. It is it's nuts, but I'm here to tell you the fastest guy without any question, Denny, is the 259 Kawasaki of James he's, he's Stewart. He's been fastest all weekend long. He's already a full straightaway ahead. A full straightaway ahead, exactly. You know, we knew he was going to come back here with about six races left. We knew he was going to get at least a win. It was, it was how many wins and how soon he was going to get it done. He's getting it done right now. He's out front and pulling away from the two points chasers. Chad Reed and Ricky Carmichael. Unbelievable for James Stewart. Let's take a look at the onboard on the left. Heath Voss at Amico, Texas, and no fear spike Garnet Yamaha. That's what it looks like through his goggles. And you see the battle for second on the right. Really, Chad Reed starting to separate himself just a little bit from Ricky Carmichael. Ricky Carmichael insisted that he would not allow this championship just settle into the championship chase. He wants to win races. He wants to beat Chad Reed. He doesn't want to finish up like he did last time. And right now, Reed's got the upper hand. Let's go down to Davey Coombs. Well, according to Mike Gosser's pit board, you're exactly right, Denny. He's got 54.1 on the last lap, but Gosser told Carmichael, you need 53. And he was cheering like this is the last lap in Las Vegas. So don't think that Ricky doesn't want to win but he doesn't need to beat Reed as much as Reed needs to beat Stewart. You're exactly right, and Davey, I can do one better than that. Stewart just turned a 51.08, almost a 52 flat. He's a full second faster than Chad Reed every single lap. Yeah, and but we need to see if James can do it for all 20 laps. He was the fastest man on the track in Orlando. He made a big mistake in the world, but I guarantee it, right now, Jay Bones put on the pit board, relax, James, ride your own <laughs> race, and Bubba is guaranteed riding his own race. Fourth place, Travis Preston, number 70, the 103, Sebastian Tortelli has him in his sights. Tortelli did not make it through the heat race. He was able to get by Travis Pastrana, get a little bit more uh, practice time out there on the track. Getting by your teammates, one thing on the Suzuki Pastrana, the Honda's a different story with Preston. And Preston's young, he's a great kid. He's fired up to be back racing 250. He's on that 450 Honda. Look at Sebastian's on a 450 Suzuki. These are the top four strokes right now, back in fourth and fifth. A great ride for Sebastian and Travis. Both these guys looking for top five finishes, and this could be yet another one for Travis, and I think maybe his first of the season. Sebastian Tortelli trying to get up on the podium, trying to get by Travis Preston. He closes in on the factory Suzuki. It is James Stewart, the 259, that is just checking out. He has an eight-second lead over Chad Reed, Ricky Carmichael in third spot right now. I am so impressed by James Stewart, the Kawasaki, 
is just flying. I don't care. You give him sand, you give him hardback, you give him both. He's showing how fast he is here in Dallas. He just looks so comfortable, and man, he's on fire in Dallas. How exciting for him to get his first win. History in the making. James Stewart out in front, but we still have more to come to Dallas. Welcome back to the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series. It's main event time. Lap 12 of 20 has been completed by James Bubba Stewart on that Fox Racing Factory Kawasaki. Davey Coombs, you got something for us. Well, you're not going to believe this, but I'm watching a pit bar that Jeremy Albrecht is putting out for Bubba. Guys, Reed is starting to reel him in ever so slightly. Remember, James Stewart has never gone a 20-lap main event without crashing. You know, he's kind of known for that. He's young, and they're trying to get him to relax. But I don't know. Fatigue might be an issue. Keep an eye on Reed. He's not done yet. We're going to do that 7.7 .7 seconds. Thanks, Dave. You're exactly right. It was Reed three-tenths of a second faster. j Bo trying to give him that encouragement. Your very first win, Debo, you won many 125 main events. You were the you won here in Dallas back in 1990. You weren't able to get that 250 main event. The 250 is a whole other class, man, and this is a, just a demanding class. This is the hardest series in the world. And Chad Reed, he's already a Supercross champion. He's trying to close the gap, and he's trying to just whoa, look at Cha Cha right there. That the section right there. But he needs to catch up to Stewart and try and close the gap on those points on Ricky Carmichael if he has any hope of winning a second consecutive Supercross title. But winning your first race when you're James Stewart, it has to be tough. So much weight had been on your shoulders, but it could happen in this race. We've had it happen three times before. We've had Jean-Michel Bale back in 90 win here, Jimmy Ellis in 75, and then the big mud race, Doug Henry back in 95. That was his first 250 main event victory. Well, I think we're seeing history in the making right now. We talked to Davey mentioned that maybe he's getting a little tired, making some mistakes. I think he learned a lot from Orlando, and he's coming back right now and look at this gap right now I mean he he has considerable lead on Reed and I think I think Bubba learned enough and look at Ricky right now back there in third a place he hates to be but I think we that Bubba learned enough in Orlando to go you know what if I've got to just slow down a little bit to keep my lead I will do that instead of risk crashing and because you know what this once you get one win under your belt those other ones, they just start snowballing, and I think we're going to see that from Bubba Stewart here to finish out this season. You see Carmichael, really, I, I think he's closing in on Reed. You see him making up considerable difference. Jeremy McGrath, you know, we saw him. You know he's watching this race. Is the crown, you know, McGrath's the all-time winning as Supercross rider. When he sees Bubba, he has to kind of think that maybe this is the guy who will take over the race, don't you think? Or is it Reed who people so compare to him, you know, so often? Well, I don't know. James Stewart is the next guy in line, and, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's got to be him. This guy is making things happen. It's his rookie season Supercross. We would wait for that perfect storm, and here we are in Texas. We're getting it. But Bubba Stewart, he's long gone. And look at Sebastian Tortel. We were waiting for that, that battle of the board to come through, and it took forever, didn't he? These guys, those top three guys are the cream of the crop. They're the best in Supercross, and we're seeing it right now. James Stewart, Chad Reed, Ricky Carmichael, Sebastian Tortelli. Tortelli in fourth, the 103 Suzuki. David Villeman on the factory Yamaha goes to the inside. Villeman gets by a lap rider. Now he has a 103 to work with, but David Huffman tucks in, going to put himself in between. David Huffman a lap down, but here comes Villeman, and here comes The Rock. Two guys who are looking for a top four finish right now. Want to close the gap on Tortelli. They aren't going to get on the box, but every position counts. These guys are animals. You know, I don't care where they're at. You're always going to want to pass the guy in front. You're not going to settle in, especially The Rock, that number five Honda. That guy's an animal. Mike LaRocco charging in. Does he have time to get up there and shake things up? LaRocco trying to get inside the top five. Villeman holds that spot. Villeman rider number 12, LaRocco number five. There's 103. He's in fourth. Tortelli, Villeman, fifth. Six is LaRocco. Mike LaRocco's last Supercross victory. I got to call that race. Indianapolis, Indiana. That was the loudest I've ever heard of Supercross before. The man who seldom gets hole shots got one that night and led all 20 laps. This guy is leading so far. He's going uh, to complete his 17th lap next time around to get the flag. James is fast here in Dallas. He, it, it, did he, it's kind of a little black mark as we look at Heath Boss on the left. Kind of a black mark in the history book for James Stewart. 
the one championship he did he did not win. He lost that championship here in Dallas trying to be aggressive with Ivan Tedesco. Yeah, but he's grown up a lot since then. A lot smarter rider than we've seen back then in the past. I, I, a lot smarter rider just what we've seen from last weekend. And he is on fire. He's riding so smooth. He's making maybe a little mistake here and there, but he's this is race to lose. He's only seven. He's not only he's 7.3 seconds ahead of Chad Reed. A very respectful spot that he can kind of set onto his own pace because I know Chad Reed. He's not going to do anything stupid. He's already said it at Orlando. He goes, no, I was almost content to ride against behind Bubba. I guarantee he's content right now and settling in and going, hey, Ricky, I'm going to gain two more points on Carmichael. You're exactly right, Dima. That blemish I was talking about, 2002. James looked to be the, the fastest, the cream of the crop. He, he was a young rookie, James Stewart, over aggressive, knocked himself out of the championship. I, I've never seen Big James or Little James so angry at themselves that week. There's the battle going on for second. Carmichael's really closing in. I don't know if they'll be able to catch Stewart, who's 7.3 seconds up ahead of these two, but it's down to less than two seconds. Carmichael still wants to get by Reed. Carmichael does not want to lose to Reed. I think he's settled in. He's seen what Reed has to offer him right now, and now I think he's stepping up the pace, going, I can, oh, I, can, I can pick up the pace a little bit more than I have in the past, and I can close the gap on Reed. He does not want to get beat by him. I've said it a number of times. He's a, he's a sore loser. He said it himself. If he can't win the race, he sure as heck wants to beat Chad Reed and open up that point streak from 29 to 31 instead of dropping it to 27. And that grab a put up. Carmichael really turned it in lap times. He was a second and a half, almost two seconds faster than James Stewart. Carmichael is closing in. Lap number 19 about to be had of 20. Next time they come around. Watch this whip section. This is a big section right now. Both those guys get through a strong up over the staircase. Look at the interval. Leader to second place, down to five plus seconds. James Stewart takes a white flag. We're on the last lap. Chad Reed is starting to close in. Ricky Carmichael really closing in behind him. There's the 22. Whoa, way back Stewart in the makes shot. a mistake right there. Kind of over jumps in the face. Here comes Reed. They definitely close the gap. Reed is almost down. Oh. Reed goes down with the left rider just like that. Travis Preston clips his front end, and Chad Reed goes down. Just like we said, Ricky Carmichael will not lose two points to Chad Reed tonight. He will gain two. I don't know if that was prophetic or what, Nemo, but you said it. It looked like Chad almost felt it coming. He looked away. Next thing you know, his front wheel was taken out from under it. One more time through the whoop section. James Stewart, the factory Kawasaki. He's been waiting since 2002 when he made his professional debut. And it looks like it's 2005. James Stewart wins his first ever 250 main event. The crowd is on their feet. History has been made. James Stewart wins in Dallas. Bubba, one happy young man, and Ricky Carmichael, one relieved young man. Look at Bubba. What kind of dance, what kind of prayer are you going to do? He danced in the 125 class. He's just so thankful to survive. Look at that. How cool is that? That Ricky is awesome. Carmichael says, stand up, champ. A true champion. Congratulating another true champion. This is incredible. History in the making right here, Robbie Floyd. Don't you hug me, Diddy. Get away. <laughs> These are the kids we've been waiting for from Florida. Both adults now at the top of their professional careers. James Stewart takes his first victory, and we'll hear what he say it says when we come back to Dallas. Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. MX versus ATV Unleashed. It's now available for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Brought to you by Suzuki, maker of performance-driven motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. Welcome back to Texas Stadium. Remember this night, James Bubba Stewart takes his first 250 Supercross main event victory as we look at the Honda 250 results. Bubba takes the win here in Dallas. Carmichael sneaks into second, Reed in third. Sebastian Tortelli, 40 seconds behind in fourth. Let's go down to Davey Coombs. Chad, what in the world happened on the last lap? I uh, just, I was coming up on Travis Preston, and uh, he just kind of went to the turn, and, you know, I was expecting him to kind of move to the outside, get out of the way, and as I turned underneath of him, he just kind of slowed right down, and, man, that's a bummer. That's that's a real tough one to swallow when you know, I you know, I had second pretty easy, and Ricky was right there, but, you know, I, I knew I could hold on for the last lap, and uh, that's frustrating. You know, the beginning of the race, I... I was trying a back section that I hadn't done all day, and you know I, I jacked it up and kind of Bubba pulled away, and uh, that's that's tough. You know I felt really good just sitting there waiting for uh, you know just trying to wait and to wind up with him, and 
lost contact, so that's, that's a tough one. Thanks, Davey. All right, now it's time for our Nissan turning point. Debo, it has to be. Well, Mr. Floyd is when the gate dropped, and at 259 on the right of your screen, he drag races Carmichael in the first turn. Reed drops the inside of Carmichael, throws an elbow, and 259, he's gone. That's our Nissan turning point. Now let's go back down to DC. Ricky, sometimes even you get lucky. I just want to ask you, what'd you say to Bubba when you stopped him on the last lap? I, I, I didn't say anything. I just <laughs> picked him up and said, I didn't say nothing. I just held his, uh, held, held his arm up. That's what, uh, that's what it's all about. We all work to win a 250 Supercross race. And uh, I know the feeling. I just uh, wish I could have it again. <laughs> The Supercross road leads to Las Vegas. Push your chips forward. They're ready to throw down. It's V-Town, baby. The final stop of the Supercross Series, May 7th. Come join us. Of course, the Dave Coombs Senior East-West Shootout. Let's take a look at Series points. Ricky Carmago leads both. Really, he's got to beat himself if he's not going to win this championship. Let's go back down to Davey Coombs. James, I have to apologize. I thought you were slowing down in the middle. You weren't. You were just getting ready for the sprint. Congratulations, man, your first win. It's got to feel great. Yeah, that's 20 laps right there. <laughs> I didn't have any front brakes. It's like the third lap, you know, uh, I hit it loose, and I didn't have a front brake, so I was slow in my corners, but just kept it steady out there. You know, I got some good first laps, and you know, I was pulling away from Chad a little bit, and I, he slid out, and then you know, I just kind of gapped those guys, and then uh, they started catching me a little bit, and then I was like, all right, here we go, baby. It's after the halfway, and, you know, I feel good after that, so I sprinted off. Dude, you know, oh, my God, dude. I, oh, my <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say out there. I just want to tell my mom I love you so much. You know, I just want to thank I got a great family being behind me, a team, Kawasaki, Bruce Thurston, Jeremy McCann, Albrecht, I don't You can find out more on Bubba's exploits at supercross.cc.com on the web and every Supercross Saturday night. Click on Supercross Live. Bubba's your champion in Dallas. For Debo, Denny Stevenson, Davey Coombs, I'm Robbie Floyd. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.